Uh, it's a Friday. It's a Friday, Barbara Balls. What do you know about that? What do you know about that? <laughs> welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode, another exciting episode of Fridays with Vinny. It's finally Fridays with Vinny time, and uh, I gotta be honest, guys. I think I need to step it up with the sound uh, dampening in my room because I got like I got pads behind me. Don't get me wrong, I got pads on the wall. But ever since I closed this place up, it just feels really echoey. And I think I need to do something about that. At least it's like closed up now. Like I've got the dryer running, can't hear it hardly at all. And that's perfect. That is perfect what I need. Honestly, that's what I, that's what I love about, I don't, I don't know about, like I don't know how popular of a genre this is. Like it's become pretty prominent recently, especially with like lo-fi. But like I love bedroom pop because of like, no one cares. No one cares if the vocals sound perfect. It's that perfect, like, 90s boy next door kind of vibe. I don't know. Maybe that's why I love it. It's because I'm not very good at getting perfect stuff. Um, but anyway, yeah. This is episode 28. 28, everybody, uh, for November 12th, 2021. We are getting close to Thanksgiving, the time of the year, where we all are so thankful for what we have um, immediately before <laughs> getting as much as we can for the very next holiday. Uh, wonderful, wonderful time of year, as well as recently, I guess it was, what is that, That what is that Hindu India holiday called again? It's got a really cool name, but I can never pronounce it. Uh, hang on. What is Hindu version of Christmas? Hell just showed up. And it's like, Diwali is a Hindu and si equivalent to Christmas and Hanukkah, as it is a festival of lights. When is Diwali celebrated? Diwali, sometimes Diwali. Let me look up Diwali. I think that was the one I kept seeing. Diwali. Okay, show me images. That's so pretty. Look how pretty that is. Oh my gosh. I wish I could show you this. It's. It looks so... Like, just look it up on Google Images. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh. And they got lasers now? That is cool. That is cool. Honestly. Honestly. India. They got the best. They got the best. Um. Does Japan celebrate it? Let's see. Diwali Japan. Uh. Oh yeah. Japan's... Japan's pretty similar I think with it um, looks like they're mostly fireworks whereas India seems a lot more like obviously I think Japan Diwali is when they have the lanterns right well let me look that up what holiday are the Japanese lanterns for uh, Obon Festival. The Obon Festival, also known as the Bon Festival, is an annual Japanese holiday which commemorates and remembers deceased ancestors. It is believed that their spirits return at this time to visit their relatives. So it's the same as that movie, um, Dead. <laughs> is that the name of the Pixar movie? Dead. <laughs> What's that movie called? The one where everyone's dead, except the boy, but then he's like, you're gonna be dead, but honestly... Being dead didn't seem so bad. I think I think for, uh, he's the same as me. Where it's just like, but I wanted to be a musician with my life. What am I going to do now? Uh, what was that movie called? Coco. That was it. I knew it was one word. <laughs> what if it was just like, there was inside out, up, dead. <laughs> That's what the recent films have just been. I mean, like that, um, what was that other film? The one about the piano player? They really like their musicians, don't they? I mean, Coco is about a boy who wants to be a musician, but his family's like, no, music, no music, music bad. Um, what was that recent one about the piano player? Uh, what is it called? Frick. Um, uh, Pixar. Let's, how many things come up when I have a ghost movie? Ghost movie. We've got Soul. Oh, Sap is it. Soul. Uh, Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that makes sense because it, it's, it's soul music. Because he's got soul and it's about him being a soul. A lot of people were complaining around that time that, like, they had a black lead character. And uh, he was, um, yeah, hardly ha hardly present. But, I mean, like, it's an hour and 40 minute movie. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe they could have designed the ghosts to be with that more in mind. If that makes sense. But um, also at the same time, it's 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 weird, right? Cause like, 
it's the same thing as the princess and the frog it's like i thought they really did a really good job in that movie but people argue that like well they they she was a frog for most of the movie it's like well yes the point it was there a similar one hang on disney princess movie where princess transforms okay how many of those no not enchant okay um Uh, we're like, we're like, she's not visible. Okay, so let, let me just, let's, oh, no, get out of here. Um, all Disney princess movies. Let me get a list of them. Come on, okay. More. Okay, we've got, so this is what shows up for it. Tangled. Okay, yeah, she's, she's all white in that one. Brave. She's white, but also, is it Scottish? So that's a little bit. Atlanta, that's not, that's, Atlantis isn't a princess movie. Unless we're calling the lead character, is that guy a princess? I can dig it. Araya and the Last Dragon, she's uh, Japanese, right? Or Chinese? Chinese, I guess? Yeah. Uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Is what's her name a princess? I don't I don't think that counts. Unless you're paying attention to Kingdom Heart rules. Uh, Tangled Again, for some reason. Cinderella, that's the live-action version. Hercules, he's white. Uh, Mulan, she's Chinese as well. Gotta, gotta give our Chinese plenty to deal with. Snow White, she's super white. Okay, do we have... Okay, Snow White, she's white. Frozen, they're white. Dang it. They keep re, they keep re-showing up. Little Mermaid, they're, they're white. Mulan, Chinese. And I'm trying to think of like... Yeah, those are all like... Those are all... They, they, they're all the same, you know, the whole thing. I guess the Princess and the Frog, they really did a... They were, she really did spend. <laughs> she really was the only princess that just uh, just got shoved to the back for the whole movie. But I don't know. I, I don't know because there's also the argument to be made. Like, is is like, is it is it your skin color that makes you who you are, or is it like your experiences? Because it's still the same person, and there's she's still like struggling with the whole identity of how everyone's perceived her all her life. So that that maybe. Maybe they should have angled on that angle more, you know what I mean? Like, just uh, had more... I mean, they did have a little bit of that where, like, you know, she's dealing with, like, the whole issues of, like, you know, how how people how people treat her. Like, oh, a woman from your background can't be running a restaurant. That would be dangerous for our investment. Oh, better uh, better not do that. Oh, and uh, I don't know. Maybe if they had more of that angle with, like, the frog. Where, like, I don't know. I mean, obviously they had to still have the. It was a, it was a fun twist. Uh, but I don't, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure there are plenty of people that would have, uh, much better opinions on that and be able to think through it more. I haven't really, you know, maybe it's not my maybe it's not my thing to talk about. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not my job to. Uh, to uh, call out white people, but uh, also at the same time, maybe it is my responsibility because I am white. So white people will listen to me, right? No, they'll call me a pretentious asshole, and then all you, uh, all, all the, uh, all the black people complain about it. They'll call uh, petty and hold on to old grudges from the '60s. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's 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 weird when you start looking back without the rose tinted glasses look back at all those movies and be like, oh, wow, these are all white. Because I'm all white once you get past the pen. Anyway, all right. Um, What else? Anything happened this week? Hopefully you guys' weeks went well. Glad you made it to Friday. All those of you who are in school getting close to those Thanksgiving breaks, hope you get a good one. Hope you can go back and eat some motherfucking turkey uh, and hope that you don't have to deal with annoying family members arguing about politics this year. That is, we do have a little bit of a break, I guess, right? Because, like, last year, election time, all that was all going on. But this year, maybe, like, you know, maybe people have chilled out a little bit. And maybe they'll be like, all right, I'll wait, you know, I'll complain about it. But, like, you know, I won't worry too much, you know. And so maybe maybe the arguments will be saved for, you know, next year as we're winding up with the preliminaries. Because how does that all work? Because it seems like those elections drag on because everyone's arguing about who should be elected first it's like in the party and then it's like between the parties 
like first you have the big lineup and everyone's arguing about like no this guy because he's got experience no this guy because he's got ideas no this guy because she's a woman <laughs> and then like you know and then uh that whole goes on for a while until finally they pick their people and then that is officially like you know no more questioning no more uh no more considering whether or not that candidate is actually good uh, they're your candidate you got to go with them because they got an r or a d next to their name so that'll be fun uh but maybe this maybe this thanksgiving we'll have a little bit of a break before that starts uh but anyway maybe not maybe you just got to deal with your uncle i was i always wonder like what's the best way to deal with that right like you got an annoying family member just like talking about how we shouldn't be giving people, we should be paying for college. We shouldn't be giving these poor people money. We shouldn't be, <laughs> we shouldn't be helping the homeless. We shouldn't be raising the minimum wage. That's, these jobs are for teenagers to get exploited with. And it's just like, I, it's, uh, frick dude. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, do you try to explain why the system isn't working? Do you like try to, try to level with them and be like, listen buddy. I know, I know you think, I know you think that uh, minimum wage is perfect, but um, you know, you look back at inflation. If we were making the same amount as minimum wage was in the uh, in in the in the 60s, we'd be making we'd be making 26 dollars an hour minimum. That's based off of inflation. You know, everything else is still going up. Don't tell me that inflation is caused by caused by raising the minimum wage. We haven't raised the minimum wage since what 2004. I gotta look that up. When was the last time minimum wage was raised? Um, okay, since 2009, last time Congress raised it, and then they just kind of dicked around ever since then. It was so it's 7.25 now. It was last time. It was 5.15 per hour in 2007. Think about how pathetic that is. Oh my gosh. Um, let me. Okay. Okay, let's look this up. Um, 725 in from 2009 to 2021. Let's see what that's. Okay, converted uh, based on, I got to look up inflation. Inflation. Um, cumulative price change. 725 base has increased to 935. So that's, wow, seven and a quarter was minimum wage. Now, if, if it kept up with that, it would be 935 of course 725 back then was still pathetic um let's look up um minimum wage in 19 uh, so let's let's be generous let's go 70 maybe 1970 was 160 160 from 1970 to 2021 inflation um that would be wow, six hundred percent increase. Is it really? Is it really only eleven thirty one? Is that true? Really? I mean, that's okay. Inflation rate from nineteen seventy to two thousand twenty twenty one. So really, I mean, what what do they want to raise it to? That's what I want to know. Like, that would still be way more than the current minimum wage is. Like, that'd be about $12 an hour would be the minimum wage now. I think if I'm reading this right. I don't know. I don't know. That's the problem, guys. That's why I don't like arguing with people. Because, like, I'm just I'm just requoting facts. I want to be able to, like, you know, do the math myself. But, like, then you're just, like, trying to, trying to look it up the perfect numbers for, like, you know, well, 1970 would still only be $12 an hour. I'm trying to argue for $15 an hour. Um, and again, I, $12 an hour still is barely a livable wage, especially like, you know, you consider taxes and everything. You consider how much, um, housing costs in particular areas really everywhere needs their own minimum wage. You know, like minimum wage out here should be at least 15, $16 an hour. Whereas back where I'm from, you know, you could get away with $12 an hour. But then of course you got the issue of. What if factories move to small income towns so that they, they can exploit workers there and, you know, they don't have to do as big of a minimum wage. And so you got factories shutting down in bigger cities because cost of living is higher and moving to smaller towns. 
And so you, they're just hopping all over the place, right? Um, maybe that, I mean, don't get me, maybe that would be better. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, right? Because you got to try it first. You got to try it, but then you try it and it messes everything up. And then you got to deal with more bureaucracy like, oh, we got to fix this because it, it messed up. We were experimenting with this, but it didn't work. So I don't know. I've seen a lot of good arguments on the sides of like make, raising minimum wage federally versus like state by state basis versus even like city by city basis. I've seen some good arguments for that. Um, the one I haven't seen any good arguments is for keeping it as low as it is. Like, come on, guys. Come on, you guys. You know, it's, it's, um, taint right. Especially you look at like how waiters, waiters, waitresses, all those people are treated because you assume they're going to get tips. So they end up losing money per hour because you're assuming they're going to get this amount of tips, which is absolutely ridiculous because they take that tax out. As if, as if they're getting tips. You shouldn't have to rely on tips. You shouldn't. Taint right. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't freaking know, guys. That's, 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 that's my question. So there, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys. Let me know. Let me know in the comments of wherever you're seeing this. Uh, should you argue with people at Thanksgiving? Should you, uh, should you try to, <laughs> should you try to get people to understand your views, or uh, should you just shut your mouth? And eat your dang turkey. Just open your mouth, put a turkey in it, close your mouth, and chew. And try not to lose your fucking mind. Oh my gosh, last year, last year going back to Thanksgiving, especially after, that was like, it was like right when the election finally was done and everyone was like, well, man, you're just cheating the federal election. It's like, no, you fucking idiots. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, it kind of, it makes it hard to like, hang out with family when you're just like why are you why are you this way why are you so stupid look i got a voice message from donald trump my president talking about how he's gonna take down the democrats but he needs our money to help quick let's all pitch in it's like oh really oh really i'm sure that's gonna go well just sure sure just throw your money away these guys he doesn't have enough money poor trump he just doesn't have enough money that's a problem yeah give him some of your give him some of your money why don't you do that? That definitely sounds like a thing that would help out. Ugh. All right. All right. I got to move on, guys. That's I don't want to get into that. I don't want to get into that because then people are going to be like, but what about Biden? Blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, I know. It sucks. Everything sucks. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? I'm sorry. All right. Here's something I got to talk about, guys. I had a bit of an epiphany this week. Another one. I remember. <laughs> I remember when I was young, I would have epiphanies all the time. It was just like, uh, you know, I'd be, uh, I just, oh my gosh, I thought of this new way of thinking about things, which will totally open up my mind and, and change the way I live. And, and all of a sudden I'm living to my full potential. It's like, I want to go back in time and be like, old Vinny, will this epiphany help me live up to my full potential? Like, no, no, you're still a piece of shit. You're still a piece of shit. Sorry, kid. You still suck. Oh man. It's okay. It's okay. Just, uh, you know, maybe, uh. Maybe next year you'll be better. You won't, though. You won't. You won't. I uh, I remember I used to write myself letters every year. I really should start doing that again, but that service I used closed down. I had one scheduled for, like, whenever I turned 21. Of course, that was a while ago even now, but, like, I wrote that when I was 15 or 16, which would have been, like, five years off. And it was it was probably all about, like, oh, I hope, you're, I hope you get to move to California. I hope you get to do all these things. And it's just, like... Yeah, sorry, kid. Sorry, kid. Some dreams just don't come true. Honestly, it's 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 my. I could I could I could do it now even. But like, what? How do you how do you even like make that kind of a leap? I couldn't do it right now anyway. Cause like I don't know. Both Jan and I, we have a higher standard of living from like having our own house now. It's like I could I really go back to like couch surfing? Of course I couldn't. I, of course I couldn't. That would be impossible. The, the most I could do is go back to renting and like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I got a house now. Maybe I should just pay this off and like, see if I can't. And also like, there's this weird thing when you're young where like, uh, you think that you're gonna, you think that you're gonna somehow miss out. And there is an aspect of that, right? Like when you're, uh, when you're trying to be a rock star, um, you're, uh, you got this, there's this like, 
it's very difficult for someone in their 30s to be successful uh, doing like pop music. But um, going back to my epiphany I had, it, it occurred to me. I was listening to an episode of Lightning Bugs with Ben Folds, who is one of my favorite musicians, if you guys know anything about me. Um, but um, he, was, uh, he was talking with this guy, and they were talking about uh, making art that is uniquely you. It was, an, it was a, like the basic premise of the episode. And it, it got me thinking, because he was talking about, uh, he was talking about, because someone was asking him on their kind of listener line where people like leave a message a voicemail and he listens to it and then answers their question they were asking about like when does the magic happen when you're in the studio like you know have you figured out a formula for that and he basically said like when they were making the first Ben Folds 5 album um they uh they made it they spent their whole budget making it and they hired this guy and this guy was a great like audio engineer a great producer he was he was really good at his job and he made it sound like he made it sound perfect. Got them to you know keep their tempo steady, blah blah blah. You know, tried to get them to uh, got them to get them to sound really really just professional. Which you know they're all good musicians, so that that probably worked really well. But he said he listened. To, he kept listening to the album, and he's like, it sucked. And uh, he said that he realized he was gonna have to like make music that was uniquely you. And he said that's when the magic happens, right? Is like when people are just when you just yourself, when you're just doing what you love. When you're making something that you're proud of. And it made me realize for the past two years of writing music, not exclusively, but I feel like I've really handicapped myself by uh, wanting to write music that I feel like would succeed. Um, there is like certain aspects of like, like when I was like writing songs for the uh, this first album that I'm still working on, um, I was really just like constantly thinking, oh, I really, I really need a route of your song because these songs are all slow. And I realized the other day, it was just like, well, that's that, that's what you like. That's what you like in music. That's what I enjoy writing. That's what I enjoy recording. And it's it's what I enjoy uh, it's what I enjoy making, I guess. And then listening to as well, you know. Most of the music I listen to is pretty slow-paced. There are a few exceptions, obviously. Um, and But most of those are more like rock and roll numbers. Um, and so it's a... Uh, it's weird because I, I hear all this pop music and I remember Rumi from Rumi Official had a tweet a while back saying like uh, he felt that people should um should listen to pop music because like if you want to succeed at being a musician, you need to create, you need to get to where you enjoy and create what is popular. And I, I, I kind of disagree with that. And I would be, if you want to let me know what you guys think, feel free to do so. But um, I feel like I feel like I the musicians that I love are the ones that are themselves. I don't I don't like like I still listen to modern musicians. There are plenty of ones I listen to, but like I like it when they're themselves. I can tell I can tell Bieber's recent stuff like the <laughs> yummy song he did. That wasn't that wasn't Bieber. That wasn't him being himself. That was him trying to appeal to like a, a you know this was him trying to make like a, a a single to get him back in the spotlight, and it just didn't feel genuine. Whereas Taylor Swift's recent stuff that she's been doing has felt very genuine in herself, and those are both popular artists. So I'm not I'm not ripping on popular people. I'm not ripping on famous people. I'm not even ripping on modern music. But like, you look at like musicians that I really feel like. I maybe necessarily don't not like, but I recognize that they're being themselves. Are people like Billie Eilish or Twenty One Pilots? It's just like these people are uh, they're being themselves. They're being them themselves, and they're uh, they're doing music that they love. And you know when they're when they make new stuff and experiment and do stuff, they're they're being themselves. They're not trying to appeal to a market and or demographic. They're just that is them, and they're and it's totally fine. To, like cre- try to um try to like create a brand based off of yourself but like you should create that based off of who you are not off of what you think will be popular and i uh i remember when i did homeschooled nerd i was constantly trying to reinvent the brand because like i wanted i wanted something that would succeed but the reality is i never settled on anything because i you know i i was constantly uh i was constantly torn between what i wanted for the channel and what I felt would be successful, like what would be mass marketable, um, and something I could scale, so to speak. And uh, honestly, I feel like in the age of the internet, you can't do that anymore. You know, you can't really have mass appeal because, like, you can't you can't go about with the goal of having 25 million subscribers. You gotta have the goal of like 
maybe having a hundred thousand. Like that's, I feel like that's the level, and uh, it's not, it's not easy to do, because like there's there's a lot to be said about like you know, um, you know, uh, how do you figure out what kind of audience there is for a niche? How do you tell like how how um how uh how how filled up this niche is because there are plenty of small people like you in this niche probably that aren't getting visible you're only seeing the top you know one percent so to speak um are being successful in this kind of niche so it's uh it's 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 something that i know a lot of um a lot of marketers deal with a lot of big business people are having to try to kind of work around this because like the age of the internet has changed the way people uh, interact with uh, things they like with their music that they like with their shows that they like, with the, the the kind of media that they watch and listen to, so uh, it's 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 weird, right? Like, uh, same thing as whenever I do podcasts, like this podcast here, I have no idea what I'm doing with it. I don't. I'm just sitting down at a microphone and talking. I'm not. I'm not coming here with a plan. I still don't have an intro or outro theme. I still haven't made the. I have a theme for recommendations, but I haven't recorded it or anything. Um. So. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. It's like um, I feel like a lot of what I do with YouTube and with music now, I'm torn between like trying to make it have more mass appeal versus like just doing what I enjoy and having fun with that. So I don't know, right? Like um, like this podcast. What is the point of it? The point is, I mean, the only real point I I kind of have established is that um, this is the show where I give myself therapy. And you are basically it's <laughs> I'm sure it's I'm sure it's super fun for everybody, but uh I just talk about what's been bugging me and what what I've uh what I've been thinking about. And you know, maybe maybe that's just gonna be annoying for people forever, or maybe uh maybe it'll get to the point where you guys are just like, Well actually this is fun. And maybe other people uh, maybe I'll get to the point where I'm entertaining enough that uh new people to the podcast will find it enjoyable. Or maybe we can just all have a big conversation. Really, I guess that's my goal, right? Like, I just want to be able to have conversations with people and use this as the medium for it because I've always loved podcasts for that. Like, I feel like they work really well for, uh, for like, interaction weekly because um, you don't have to, like... With live streams, everyone's got to show up at the same time. Whereas with podcasts, people can send in messages, they can leave voice calls, um, and it works really well for, like, you know... When you have a smaller audience, uh, not everybody has to show up at the same time, and so people aren't left out as much. Um, but also, also there's like this weird thing, right? Where like I've been listening to a lot of newer podcasts recently, and there's always like I don't just start listening because I enjoy people. I start listening because it offers some form of a uh, of value for me. Usually, it's educational, uh, whether it be about like I've listened to a new one, which I probably will recommend today. Um, which is about cocktails, and they they just do a deep dive. But they're this it's it's done by these uh, three guys. They're like a party party rock band, and uh, this is like their kind of side project, I guess. And it's uh it's it's really fun. And I've all of a sudden found that I oh I really like these guys. I like listening to them, and you know I want to be able to listen to their bonus episodes that they do, where they just talk about what they're doing or go around L.A. and have fun. Uh, I f- I think that's a really interesting. But I wouldn't just listen to that. If I hadn't gotten to the point where I enjoyed the podcast for them, which for me does not take very long because I do not have friends. So any any resemblance to that, I immediately get to get attached to a show or a podcast or whatever it be. Um, Anyway, anyway, guys, um, shucks, Uh, that's that's basically what I've been thinking about is just like I, I, I feel like I need to stop doing things because i think that they're gonna be successful or like overthinking things because i don't think people aren't gonna like them because i've found that the uh the music that i thought wouldn't work best is the stuff that people relate to the most um so anyway anywho in other news um i want to talk about real quick this bit of pet peeve of mine don't play your podcast out loud like i'll put up with your music your radio station but can you just don't if you got a podcast you like listening to, I don't care if it's great or not, but like, I don't want to hear a podcast who talk out loud. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure you got to the point where you like this person or you enjoy it for whatever reason. 
And if you're playing me out loud on your speaker at work, quit it. What are you doing? Put on your headphones, put in one earbud in your ear, and listen to it that way. Nobody wants to hear your podcast. Nobody wants to hear it. You're at work. You could just put in your earbud and, and stop annoying everyone else. They're just trying to get through their day at their god-awful job and get over it because it sucks. It sucks, guys. Quit it. Quit doing it. All right. <laughs> That's all I wanted to say about that. Uh, it's annoying. Quit doing it. I don't want to hear you Joe Rogan talking. I. It's You know, the funny thing is, I feel like there's been like a weird fall of Joe Rogan because he's had... He's had so many, like, guests that I enjoyed the episodes of. Um, podcast with, um, who was it? It was, like, he did an episode with somebody from the, uh, Skeptic's Guide to the Universe. Guide to the Universe. Okay, here we go. Um, was this, did he have Steve Novella ever on there? Doesn't, doesn't seem like it. Um, yeah, no, they. Ha- I feel like they had somebody on there from the Skeptics Guide. Maybe I'm guessing. Um, here's the SGU forum talking about him, but um, okay, here we go. He had Robert Sapolsky on nine six nine sixty five on the research neurobiologist and Mick West, who's a debunker of uh, conspiracy theories. Um, and he had he had Mick West on three times, but Mick West basically at this point won't go on there anymore because it doesn't validate his position to be on the same podcast that conspiracy theorists are on. If that makes sense, and so it's it's very difficult now because basically Joe Rogan has has kind of closed himself in a corner where he can only have on you know people who are either conspiracy theorists or right wing people or like because you know anybody anybody from like the skeptical group or like from the science community is kind of like, well, if I go on here, then, uh, you gotta, you gotta deal with, um, you got you gotta, you gotta deal with this kind of like, uh, background of like, I'm showing up on a podcast. Oh, and look next week, he's having, uh, Al, uh, he's having Alex Jones on for the 40th fucking time. It's like, what are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop it! So now, basically, uh, now, now he's kind of closed in. He can only have uh, he can only have these conspiracy theorist type people on there, and uh, it makes his show kind of yeah. I'll still I like the funny thing is I think he's a great interviewer, and I'll listen to like his episodes with Bill Burr. But I know inevitably when Bill Burr's on there is gonna be a moment where it's just like, what are you doing? You're not an expert on this. Why are you? Why are we having a conversation? Neither of us are experts. Uh, and he's just like, you know, we're just asking questions. And it's just like you. Sure, you can ask questions, but don't ask people who don't know. It's like, well, I'm just, I feel like we just need to ask the questions. It's like, you, you, you need to ask the right questions. And, you know, ask people that actually have studied it and know what they're talking about. Not people that just take a random theory and run with it. Anyway. Anyway, guys. All right. Um, I guess now would be a good time... To move on to recommendations, recommendations, recommendations. When you don't know what to watch, you don't know what to watch. You're gonna need a recommendation. All right. I feel like I feel like um I listen. I've been listening to these episodes just so I can critique myself and get better. And I gotta say, I feel like I'm slowly getting better. Like these shorter episodes have definitely helped a lot. Last episode, I noticed when I stood up. I feel like maybe I got more energy for a little bit and then got drowsy again from standing in the same position for a long time. So it's uh, it's kind of weird. Also, I am still following the Bible recap on, uh, there we go, on my Podbean, and I don't want to do that. <laughs> I also don't want the Bible in a year. Why are, why are these the only ones that I'm following on Podbean? Why would I want that? Why would I have ever thought that was something that I wanted? I think they automatically maybe follow them or recommend them at least all right anyway let's move on to recommendations recommendations no recommendations for this week guys um so there's a new um 
Should I recommend this yet? I'm trying to think. Because Twerp is releasing a new album, but they haven't released the album yet. They just released a music video for like their title track. And uh, I guess you could check that out, but like it feels weird just recommend a music video when their album hasn't come out. So uh, let me let me real quick see what have I what have I listened to this week? Anything new? Anything new? Um. Oh, here's the thing. If you haven't already, I was going back and re-listening to uh, Bo Burnham's old like specials that he has on Spotify. Just go check out all of his stuff if you haven't already. I'm sure everyone listening to this podcast knows all about his stuff and you've already made your own decision about whether or not you like him but i i feel like his comedy is fantastic he's what made me think maybe i could do comedy because i love the way he incorporates the music into it but like maybe i'll do that someday maybe i'll write my own comedy show someday and tour it and i'll realize that oh i am not good at this but for now it's it's i could just leave it as a fantasy like i could do that definitely definitely you couldn't you can't Vinny. You're not good at it. All right. Anyway, so yeah, that's my recommendation as far as that goes. Um, check out Bo Burnham stuff. It's it's really fun. I uh, just 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 do it. Just do it. The easiest way is just to listen to all his albums on Spotify or whatever. But you don't have to. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, podcast. Here's a podcast I recommend. It's called The Sloppy Boys. That's the one I was talking about earlier. They essentially, they've, over the past, how old is this? <coughs> First episode came out October 22nd of 2020. So they have now done um, 56 episodes. They've done it for about a year now. I guess a little over, technically. You can do math, Vinny. Just, just remember, they started in October. Now it's November of the next year. So that means over a year. Wow. Uh, but yeah, essentially every single week, they uh, they they tackle a new uh, a new cocktail. And I know that's only for those of you who enjoy the alcoholic beverages. But if you happen to, I think this is a really fun podcast to listen to. Um, so yeah, if you want, check that out. They're they're a really fun group of guys. It's really I'm learning a lot about like cocktails and how they're put together and like the history of them. It's fun because like. Normally, I'll like I'll, I'll go based off of liquor and I'll look it up that way. Whereas this is cool because it's just all over the place, and uh, I can kind of learn more about uh, both cocktails and uh, the history of them, and um, how the kind of mixology works. As well as they're not like super professional, so they're 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 a lot better for if you're a layperson like me. Um, that way you can. Uh, you can, you can, they, they'll figure out, oh, we could, we couldn't find this because we're not professional bartenders, so we didn't know what it was. So we kind of substituted with this. I'll be like, okay, perfect. That's way easy for me to find. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's the second recommendation of the week. Thirdly, do I have any books to recommend? I'm trying to think. Uh, I haven't been listening to a lot of books recently because I've just been, I've just been, uh, i just been listening to podcasts and music I haven't even had a chance to like listen through um yeah I uh I think we're just gonna have two recommendations this week guys because I can't think of anything else I've watched recently oh yeah I did yeah I did okay on HBO Max guys there's a show you probably heard of it but if you haven't checked it out here's another person telling you you should the show is called Over the Garden Wall it's only six episodes long I think sounds right it's only a few it's only what like you know, a season. Um, but it's a really well-made show, really well-written, really well-put-together. Uh, it's really good. It's really good. Go check it out. Why don't you? I think you're going to enjoy it. I sure did. It reminded me of, like, I don't know, like, Studio Ghibli mixed with, like, a Cartoon Network show. I think it is a Cartoon Network show, but you get the point. It feels very Ghibli-esque just in, like, the world. And uh, you just kind of, like, you would know nothing at the beginning. So it just seems like you're in a fantasy world, and you kind of learn more as you go, and it's uh, it's it's really weird. I enjoy it a lot. Um, so yeah, if you wanna check it out, then check it out. Um, anywho, yeah, those are my recommendations for the week, guys. As always, don't forget if you haven't, uh, you can uh, email the podcast by sending an email to contact at vinnyharned dot com. Um, gonna make sure I haven't uh, forgotten to do that. Check that email address so that 
Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, point is, yeah, if you don't want to send a full email for whatever reason, uh, you can also just leave a comment below on the um, on the freaking uh, uh, YouTube. If you're if you're if you if you're on YouTube, you can do it that way, or you can at me on Twitter. It's just if you want me to read it on the podcast, uh, use the hashtag Fridays with Vinny. That way, I know that it is for the podcast. But yeah, if, if you want me to see it, you gotta at me. Um, Aside from that, guys, I think this is a good place to leave this episode. I am still working on the album, but I haven't got it finished, so I think it's safe to say probably won't be out at Christmas. But I want to at least release a single for Christmas, so uh, maybe be on the lookout for that. We'll see how that goes. Um, And, yeah, thank you as always for listening. Um, And, uh, uh, yeah, have a great weekend. Have a great week. I will see you next Friday for another episode. Uh, And, as always... I love you, love yourselves, and bye!